So how am I going to make that seven million? Put two more zeros. You want to come up and write it? Which one is it again? Seven millions. Come up here and write it on the board. <laughs> now you go back to your seat too. You can read that from there. Um, <laughs> you ran out of ink. Uh, no, it's no <laughs> right. Okay. It is no. Okay, that is correct. Seven million because millions we knew had to have six places because there's six zeros in millions. Okay, had to have six places, and so I know that seven is just one number. So I knew I had to have five zeros in front of it before I could put that seven, and now this is seven millions. It means it takes a million of these things to make one whole. One whole, we don't know how, it could be the whole universe, you know what I mean? One whole doesn't have to be a little bitty thing. But what we know is that this whole was divided into a million pieces. It takes a million to make one. And all we have are seven millions. Okay? And that's how you would write it. So when you add or subtract decimals, keep the decimal point lined up so that they are in the correct place. When you want to change a decimal to a fraction, you read it, you write it, you reduce it. fraction would be this decimal. Equal the same thing. Read it, write it, reduce it. Two goes into both of these evenly. Two will go into 34 17 times. Two will go into 150 times. So this fraction is the same as this decimal. Having 34 out of 100 is what we're saying is the same as having 17 out of 50. Makes sense, doesn't it? Same thing. If I wanted to go backwards, is where I had left off. If I wanted to change this fraction back into this decimal, if the denominator was a tenth, hundred, thousandth, or whatever, we just showed, you could write that easily. Seventeen hundredths would be seventeen hundredths. But if it is not a power of ten, you have to get that by dividing the denominator into the numerator. Because this says 17 divided by 50. This fraction line is a division sign. One half, you had one, you divided it into two pieces. One divided by two. This says 17 divided by 50. You add a decimal point and a couple of zeros, and then you divide. 50 won't go into 17, no answer there. 50 goes into 170 three times, 450. 50 goes into 200 four times. Same thing we have there. To change a fraction into a decimal, divide the denominator into the numerator. You know it's not going to go any whole times because it's a fraction. So it's just like a reverse process? Reverse process. 50 cents equals a half a dollar, and half a dollar equals 50 cents. Same thing. Sometimes you have to use fractions, common fractions. And sometimes you're going to have to use decimals. And so you have to understand they're the same. Okay? A lot of times they'll want you to change fractions into decimals. You get a, a lot of times you'll be working a fraction problem maybe, and it might be easy for you to use a decimal if you understand it. You know, if it says 36 and a half, 
I will write 36.5 because it's easier to work with decimals a lot of times than fractions because you don't have to find that common denominator. You see what I mean? If it had three dollars and uh, if it had three and three fourths, I know that three fourths is three quarters, and three quarters is what is a decimal? You got three quarters. What do you have? It's got to be five cents, right? That is three quarters. That's why it's three quarters. It's three of the four that it takes to make four of to make a whole. You see, when you have three quarters, you have three of the things that it takes four of to make a whole. You have three fourths. Three quarters is 75 cents. It's no mystery, or no, you know, no miracle. That's what it is. So anytime I have three and three fourths as a fraction, I'll change it to 3.75 because it's easier to work with decimals for me too because we're you know it's easier to work with those things that look like whole numbers that operate like whole numbers that we can maneuver like whole numbers with with decimals you work them just like you're working regular whole numbers so it just makes it easy but if you don't know that three and three fourths can be changed to 3.75 then you're worrying about finding the common denominator changing that three fourths into something else so that you can add it to to six eighths maybe you see so and a lot of times you're just asked to change. So you need to know that to change a fraction into a decimal, just divide the denominator into the numerator. To change a decimal to a fraction, you just have to read it, 34 hundredths. Write what you just said, 34 hundredths. And if it can be reduced, reduce it. Okay? So. Adding and subtracting decimals are, it's very simple. Just keep the decimal points lined up. When you multiply decimals, when you multiply decimals, multiply as if it's a whole number. Pretend the decimal point is not there. Pretend that's 335 times 7 and go on and work it the way you normally would. Decimal points don't have to be lined up. You don't even have to worry about the decimal point when you're working the problem. Just multiply. 7 times 5, 7 times 3 plus 3, 7 times 3 plus 2. Now, once you have your answer, you have to remember now, you were not multiplying 335 times 7. That would be 2,345. You were actually multiplying 3 and 35 hundredths times 7 tenths. That's what you're multiplying if it were a regular fraction. The rules for multiplying fractions tell you, first thing, write it horizontal. Second, what? What would I have to do here? Change this to what? Improper fraction, which would be 335 hundredths, right? Because that's 300 of them plus 35 of them times 7 tenths. Then the rule says multiply top times top, right? That's what we just did there. 335 times 7, didn't we? And we got 2,345. But what they are, you got to still multiply the denominators. 100 times 10 is what? 1,000, right? Or 10 hundred, 1,000. Then you'd have to simplify this, right? 1,000 would go into 2,000 how many times? Two times. And how many would you have left? 345 thousandths, right? When I'm dealing with decimals, if I count how many places I have after the decimal in my problem, in other words, how many decimal places do I have? I have two decimal places there, right? One more here, I have three decimal places here, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If I make myself three decimal places here, one, two, three, and put my decimal, what is my answer here? The same thing down there. Two and 
345 what? Thousands. Thousands. Two and 345 thousands. Much easier to do it this way than to have to go through changing all this. Yes, ma'am. So when you put the thousands at the bottom, it's just telling what the top what it, part is. Yeah. The bottom tells you how many pieces the hole is broken into. Okay, I see. And it's saying so it's a thousand pieces in the hole, okay. and you got 345 of them. And so that's why you put the 10 up under the 7. Right, 7 tenths because this says I have 7. Mm -hmm. What they are are tenths because it's the first number past the decimal. Right. And 7 tenths means it takes 10 of them to make a hole, and I got 7 of them. And that's why you got the 100 up under the 300. Yes, because this is... If, if this is three and thirty-five hundredths, if I want to change this into all hundredths okay. in three holes, I said it's broken into a hundred pieces, mm -hmm. I got a hundred pieces in every hole. Yeah. If I got three holes, I got three hundred pieces over here, right? right? Plus the thirty-five pieces I already had, I have three hundred and thirty-five of those hundredths. Okay. okay? Then I just multiplied the top times the top, and then the bottom times the bottom. So now I'm saying, it takes a thousand to make a hole, and I have two thousand three hundred and forty-five pieces. So if I got two thousand pieces and only takes a thousand to make a hole, I can make two holes. Take two thousand out and make two holes. It's like if I said it takes two, two, two um, if it took a thousand um, pennies to make a dollar. If I could take two thousand out, I'd have two dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd still have three hundred and forty-five of those thousands left. So if you have nine hundred, that means you would put a 